Hello and welcome everyone. Hope you guys are doing great. Now we are live on Masa University Facebook page. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this live with everyone you know. Also, follow our Masa University Facebook page for future updates on webinars and upcoming events. If you have any questions along with uh, this webinar, just comment down below as we will have a QA and a sessions at the end of this webinar. So today, our very own Dr. Anthony Vincent Samrod, Senior Lecturer from School of Bioscience, Faculty of Medicine, Bioscience and Nursing, is going to deliver a talk about targeted drug delivery using nanoformulations. For your information, Dr. Anthony is specialized in bioprocess, nanobiotechnology, microbiotechnology, and phytochemistry. He was the recipient of the Agastria Award, Young Scientist Award, Gandhian Young Technological Innovation Award. Without further ado, let's hear it live from him about targeted drug delivery using nanoformulations. Dr. Anthony. Okay. Uh, good evening, one and all. And uh, some, uh, someone like this, uh, good afternoon. I'm very happy to see you uh, through uh, this live stream. I would like to speak something about uh, targeting uh, uh, that we really using some nano formulations. As we say that uh, nanotechnology is huge, even we deal with very smaller things, but uh, nanotechnology is really, really huge. When we speak about this nanotechnology, I must say that uh, in our Veda, in India, they make some metal formulations to treat uh, some diseases, especially like uh, salmonella and all. But uh, we did not know they are actually nano formulations. They used metals, they used a leaf extract to mix that metal and they made it. But we do not know how it is uh, being made and all. Now we are uh, coming to that. That time they used to say one thing, Whenever you are taking this nano formulation, you must have some uh, food restrictions. That time uh, we were saying that it is not having uh, the proper way and uh, they are not knowing what is the real action is. But now scientists are saying that when we are taking tablet, what food we are taking is having some impact on the antibiotic or whatever the tablet we are taking. So food is having a major role when you are taking any medicine. See. It has been said by our uh, Ayurveda and uh, uh, seeds of uh, Tamil Nadu have already said about that. When we come to this uh, nanotechnology, Richard Feynman, he said uh, there is plenty of room at the bottom. And where uh, he was speaking about very small particles and they are uh, very uh, important and they are having much uh, things to do with us. Say that earlier days they were making some paints. These paints, uh, they do say that it is made up of gold and all. But uh, that color will be looking like uh, green or red or blue, something. But they say that it is made up of gold. You know that they have added some chemicals and they made this gold into nanoparticle. When they made this uh, gold into nanoparticle, they started giving some different colors. So the color is uh, because of the nano size and the characteristic of nanoparticles. So introducing to you, if you say anything nanotechnology, if you say anything as nanotechnology, that is the particle, which is of size uh, lesser than 100 nanometer. If it is something uh, more than uh, 100 nanometer, we do not call that as uh, nanomaterial. We call it as micromaterial. But when it is coming to polymeric uh, nanoparticle, we do call uh, 500 nanometer as nanoparticle. Say, when you are speaking about this uh, drug delivery, I do say that these uh, nanoparticles uh, are going to be either nano suspensions or nanospheres or nano capsules or nano emulsions like that. Basically, if you ask me for uh, any uh, nanoparticle for drug delivery means, I do call them as two things. That is matrix type and reservoir type. Matrix type, I say that conjugated. That means the drug is uh, just attached to, to that that is, we call it as matrix type. Whereas encapsulated or reservoir type means it is kind of a capsule. Inside that, it is 
whatever the case is, it is going to be useful for uh, truck delivery. So the advantages of using this uh, nanoparticles for uh, drug delivery, improved efficiency, then reduced toxicity, enhanced redistribution, and improved patient compliance. Yeah, to say that one thing, we, uh, we want to have one drug. Once they are taking it, the patient must think that whatever we are saying is truth, then only they believe nano drug works. Uh, for fun, I'm saying, but the nano drug is going to be ruling world soon. Coming to the types of nanomaterials which can be used for uh, this drug delivery or nano formulations are polymeric uh, nanoparticles, solid nipple nanoparticle, nano suspension, nano gels, and uh, these are all other uh, things where I'm going to emphasize on it on my up upcoming thing. Even if you take your hair and if you just observe it uh, very keen, you can see that they are assembled, uh, say that step by step assembly is there, subunit by subunit assembly is there. Even in bacteria, if you see bacteria, there is one layer called the S layer. You know that it is a kind of uh, structure, right? It is uh, just forming together and we call it a self assembly. If you take that S layer out and if you're just putting it in a solution, they are self assemble and form a structure. So having this and all, this uh, gave much idea about the people to work on uh, nano. When we speak about this uh, polymer, two approaches, Normally, we go for uh, nanotechnological preparations. So those preparations are, say, preformed polymers we use, and we just make them to a uh, uh, smaller one. Say that bigger uh, polymer is there. We are making it into small. Then I call it a top-down approach. So the other approach is bottom-up approach. I take uh, monomers, say I take uh, glucose. Then I make this glucose into a polymer. Then I am going to make into a nanomaterial. So I do have two approach. That is top-down approach and bottom-up approach. So here we are, I'll be speaking about both here parallelly. So I hope it would be a, you'll be understanding it. Coming to this polymer-based uh, nanoparticles. Mostly this polymer-based are colloidal in nature and size between is going to be 10 nanometer to 1000 nanometer. Mostly it will be forming uh, say uh, a micro sized. And uh, most often they'll be having a cavity inside them where it can act as an nanocapsules. Sometimes they act as a nanosphere where uh, in the matrix it is going to be done. So here, when we speak about this, there are uh, enough methods uh, here to make this, say, nanoprecipitation method, solvent evaporation method, emulsification method, supercritical fluid technology, salting out dialysis, like that. So many methods are there. Sometimes we combine them and we use. A simple method is, I would say, when we were using this uh, ionic gelation technique, I started working with uh, kytosan. You know that uh, kytosan is uh, a kind of a polymer seen on uh, crab shell. Actually, this crab shell normally we did just uh, throw it off, but it can be used uh, for uh, making these drugs actually. This uh, crab shell is made up of uh, kytosan, not kytosan, it is made up of chitin. Uh, one day what we did actually we collected all the uh, crab shell and we kept it in our lab by phone Friday evening and we were very uh, happy that we collected a uh, crab shell and we kept there and we left the uh, lab on Monday we came there a crowd was there around our lab I was uh, really very uh, happy because so many came to see our research then when I was moving near to that I was uh, having some smell you know that crab shell was uh, giving out smell because we did not wash properly and it was having flesh and it has invited more people. They thought that some dead bodies there. That kind of smell came. Uh, still, I'm remembering that. But we took that uh, hydrogen and we washed it, right? We chitin, we washed it, then we powdered it. We took uh, hydrogen out of it. Then we, when we were checking some uh, literature, it was saying that they normally use a chemical. Say that you are going to powder uh, that, then you are going to dissolve it. So what you have done, you have taken a crab shell, that is a thicker one, you powdered it, you powdered it, that is top-down approach. Then you are dissolving it with acetic acid. Now you are having that uh, top-down is done. Now it is having solution, that is it is fully mixed one. So it is having chitin is fully mixed. Now what I do, I do deacetylation and then I convert them into chitosan. So deacetylated form of chitin is chitosan. So I have that uh, chitosan. Now it is, uh, say, I say it is uh, bottom, that is it is in liquid. Now what I do, I just take uh, this uh, chitosan, I take this uh, chitosan, say this is a polymerized chitosan, 
and the cross-linking agent is STPP, tri uh, polyphosphate. Instead of using this cross-linking agent, I was thinking, why not we use some other thing? So we thought uh, some other agent. Then we started using barium chloride instead of using this STPP. And uh, it was kind of third or fourth work uh, with the barium chloride, which where it was used as a cross-linking agent. And then uh, we used to uh, load uh, curcumin in it. Curcumin, you know, uh, it is a, a national uh, medicine for uh, Indians. Whatever the treatment you go, they give curcumin. So we wanted that curcumin to be uh, there. You know why it means? This curcumin, whenever we are taking inside, it is not going to reside in your body for a longer time. It will be uh, uh, going out immediately. So if you really want that curcumin to do some action in your body, it has to be retained in your system for a long time. So that is why we use that. And uh, we entrapped like that. And we made that. And we published in Applied Nanoscience. And later, we understood that that is really uh, very good. Then we started working with uh, more other polymers, which uh, made us to work on that, actually. So when we speak about uh, these advantages, they are small size, easy penetration through capillaries. You know one thing, what is the plus of this is, actually this nanoparticle can uh, bind to the cell membrane and can transfer this curcumin to cross the cell membrane. Because curcumin earlier, it cannot cross cell membrane. Now it is easy for it to cross cell membrane. So it is very helpful for that too. It can be used for uh, loading any kind of a drug, any kind of drug, either it is hydrophobic or hydrophilic, it can be. And whatever the uh, uh, cross-linking agent you are going to do, it is going to make them to be nanocapsule or nanosphere. Sometimes you can make uh, uh, using some uh, solvent methods where we call it as emulsion, that is oil and water like that, the preparation also we can do. So we do combine the carboxy uh, methyl cellulose with that, where it was uh, enhancing the ability of nanoparticle formation. And we do found that it is uh, giving more stability. Then uh, we come to this uh, solid lipid nanoparticle. Uh, it is a first generation lipid nanoparticle. Have you all uh, seen this nanoparticle? Actually, you, would have, you could see. Uh, take a water bottle, uh, pour a bit of water, and pour a bit of uh, uh, oil into it, shake it. If you shake, shake, shake like that, you can see some, uh, say, uh, a kind of a bubble structure, right? That is actually micro-sized one. That is one uh, micro-sized one. Now, what do you do? You apply some other uh, technology like sonication or uh, some other technology you can apply. And now you can make that as into nano. Now you just lyophilize it. Now you just lyophilize it. So the structure, what is going to form is going to be nano. Again, there are, there are more uh, hurdles there you have to cross. That is how you are going to make them to retain. Because if you are not going to disturb it for a long time, it is going to come back to the original. So you have to stop that. So we have to use detergent or something, right? That is your call. And uh, trapping them, everything is the hurdle you have to cross. It is easy to do. But then coming to nano suspension. Uh, when we come to this uh, nano suspension, all we know about. Uh, yeah, uh, polysaccharide, sorry, not polysaccharide, it's a polymer which is stored in uh, bacteria. In our body, we store uh, things as glycogen, but whereas bacteria store energy in the form of uh, polyhydroxyalkonate. Actually, this polyhydroxyalkonate is a fatty acid, which is, uh, this is an energy reserve for bacteria. And uh, we can even use uh, waste uh, for producing this. We can grow a bacteria on waste, and we can take this bacteria. If you take uh, this uh, polyhydroxyalkonate out of it, we can use it. When I say that, all you know that you will be wondering what it is, but it is bioplastic. The normal name we give is bioplastic. Degradable plastic is that. So what do you do? This is a fatty acid. This is a fatty acid. Take that. So fats never dissolve in water. Fats never dissolve in water. So what you do, you just mix it with uh, chloroform or uh, any other solvent. Uh, we used trifluoroacetic acid, or else we use trifluoroethanol for mixing it. You mixed it. Now what you do, now take this uh, one and you just add it to water. You are having the mixture where the fatty acid is mixed in chloroform or something. Just drop twice, you just add it. Now it is going to form granulated size. This granulated size, you just control it. You add, uh, you do sonication, or else you add some some chemicals to uh, make them to be a nano one. 
then obviously you are going to be landing up with that. So we made like that. So we used PHP for making uh, that, and we did uh, uh, we do publish in IET Nanobiotechnology. Then coming to nanogels, very interesting one it is. Uh, what is this nanogel? So have you ever seen it? Every day we are eating it, you know. This nanogel is nothing actually. You are uh, making your uh, every day we are making rice. So when you are uh, boiling this rice, then wh what do you do after boiling the rice? It is uh, if you do with the uh, pressure cooker, you won't get it. After boiling the rice, when you are uh, taking that water and you are uh, removing the water, collect that water. After some time, after some time, if you see that water forms a gel. That is a gel. It is a polysaccharide, right? And you know that it is not toxic to us. If you really can think and you really can make them as a nanostructure, as a nanogel, then you can uh, entrap any type of uh, thing. Now we can think of uh, starch means like that there are more number of polysaccharides and you can make use of them for nanogels. Now we do call that as hydrogels. We do call that as hydrogels. You know these hydrogels, they store more water and they release that water slowly. So these hydrogels are now replaced, uh, rather having for water, they are using it with some drug where they are releasing it. These hydrogels are normally we use it for uh, plants where to uh, make them very less water is enough for them because this is going to hold the water. Very good example is alginate uh, in uh, some bamboo, right? The small bamboo where we grow. All is uh, going to be there in the alginate, where it is a bigger one. If you really can make it smaller, yeah, then it is called as nanogel. Then polymeric missiles. Again, uh, the thing is, actually, this is a polymeric missile means uh, every day what we do after uh, we are cooking, we are going to wash. So if it is very oily, what we do? We just put some uh, more uh, soap solution. When we are putting that soap solution, if you see that oil, what is happening to the oil, it will be becoming a small uh, kind of a structure, a test kind of a structure it is forming. That, stru that uh, structure is called as missiles. The structure is called as missiles. That structure, you know, if you really can want to use, it is having much uh, potency because this one delivers drugs very easily and it crosses cell membrane very easily. Even we can uh, use this for delivering uh, DNA. So this is one kind of our uh, polymeric missiles and all. So we can use uh, both hydrophobic or hydrophilic drug, okay? Because uh, that uh, particular is having hydrophilic and hydrophobic one. That is hydrophilic means water loving, hydrophobic water hating. The best drug are mostly hydrophobic. So, but the problem with hydrophobic is they do not retain, retain in your body for longer time. To make your drug to stay in your, for longer time, use this kind of system. And when it is nano, very less uh, concentration of drug is also enough. So we can think about it. Then, then uh, coming to polymerosomes. This polymerosomes is actually layer by layer, which is uh, evolved from uh, the earlier uh, one. Actually, this is evolved from these polymeric missiles. So when we are going to make the structure more and more, and then stage by stage, I can store different kind of drug, where I can uh, uh, put the hydrophobic drug and the hydrophilic drug. Both of them can be done. Most of most of the antibiotics are hydrophilic in nature, and most of uh, the drug what we take for other ailment are hydrophobic in nature. Most occasion, I'm not saying all this, right? So the thing is, if you really want to give two drugs in a thing, it is possible with polymerosomes because they do hold them, and it is layer by layer. You can fall and make it, and we can do that. But the structure will be mostly in uh, say 500 nanometer or something. Then coming to liquid crystal, this is uh, the new one, the liquid crystals. So here, actually, what we do, this is also we make use of your, uh, what do you call your liposomes and everything. Say we are going to combine missiles, we are going to combine anacapsules, which is made up of everything, and we are going to make them to assemble in a way, and then we make it as liquid crystal. But it takes time, but the thing is, it is a very good uh, drug delivery system. And very few are working with these liquid crystals. So if you really want to rock something with nano, yeah, prefer this one. Then coming to uh, ceramic nanoparticles. Uh, the ceramic nanoparticles are actually, you know, uh, uh, we can uh, make use of some uh, uh, Zeronica, you call, 
the teeth and everything right it is made up of so if you make them uh, use of it and if you really can uh, use it for uh, drug delivery then we do call it i just explain it here fine so this is uh, the non nano composite this is a nano composite we use this is a nano composite which is uh, made up of uh, ceramic one uh, ceramic one mostly it is going to be inorganic one we, we sometimes we use hydroxy apatite which is uh, we do call as artificial bone like that so when we make something like that see we can think of making structures like this we can think of making structures like that so we do call it as a ceramic structure or something but you know they are uh, not degraded in our system faster and at the same time they are not highly uh, toxic to us so see that you can see some holes or pores here where you can uh, conjugate your drug and you can make them to be delivered for longer time right so with uh, if you want to do with so different type of uh, structure say you are thinking about a nano patch to treat some uh, internal wounds right then you can think of this so you can make uh, a kind of structure like that where you can incorporate your drugs and you can uh, use it then uh, liposomes uh, these liposomes are a kind of oil based one where this control can be done by means of uh, say uh, what surfactant you are going to use when i say surfactant everyone will uh, think what is surfactant very simple you use soap if you use a soap here and uh, if you are use, going to use some oil uh, phospholipids and cholesterol in a controlled way then i do call it as liposome here i must wa i want to emphasize one thing that is there are very minimal difference between every polymeric uh, nanoparticles very minimal differences it is not much difference i would say again this is the best one to carry a hydrophobic and hydrophilic drug and uh, even it looks like liquid crystal kind of or polymerosomes but polymerosome is a kind of evolved from liposomes then dentrimers so this, this is a dentrimer actually this is the dentrimer this is a kind of a structure but it is a nano kind of a structure so i can add a lig a ligand to it so this ligand can specifically go and bind to any cell this ligand is going to say this in ligand interacts only with cancer cell now this dentrimer can go and bind to cancer cell where it can be loaded with drug and uh, a specific uh, targeted drug delivery is possible with dentrimers so this is what uh, with uh, dendrimus this is one structure then uh, coming to magnetic nanoparticle this is uh, where i am working with uh, this is magnetic nanoparticle when uh, i was uh, once i was uh, uh, studying about something they said that we can move nanoparticle to one location i can use magnet and i can uh, take that to that part and we can make that to release uh, something there whatever you want we can make them to carry on out so that time it was looking so interesting so uh, i started working with that uh, by say 2010 or 2012 i started working on it but uh, producing very small and a stable one was the biggest hurdle i was facing then later i i could cross that now i have uh, uh, done more on spions and i have more than uh, 15 publications only on spions with uh, high impact journals like that so it is uh, only because of uh, uh, this spions really i love it what is pianus nothing it is super paramagnetic ion oxide nanoparticle magnetic nanoparticles are mostly ion oxides if it is going to show super paramagnetism i call it a super paramagnetic ion oxide nanoparticle so you want to manipulate them you can manipulate them you can manipulate uh, anything say this is pion and i'm going to add drugs to that and i'm going to cover it with uh, any of the polysaccharides what i have uh, said earlier and i can use it for drug delivery Uh, and uh, this pions is uh, actually it can be used for uh, theranostic approaches see that this is a egg without uh, spion and uh, this is uh, the egg with the spion see the spion is moving towards magnet inside the egg and you can see the egg yolk clearly whereas you cannot see egg yolk clearly where you can see so this pion is uh, very helpful you know we can add uh, anything you want to add put to me yeah add it. you want to add any anti cancer molecule yes so if cancer is uh, some other to the position you can give a magnetic field the spion is going to come there and it is going to deliver your drug obviously we need a mri uh, control it is not with local magnets just for sake i am saying it is possible right and uh, it obeys to magnet outside the system just we try to prove it is published in uh, applied nanoscience then uh, what they did actually we you know the specificity of this magnetic nanoparticle when you give uh, mag more magnetic power it will generate heat it generates heat 
say that this uh, rat is having the cancer here. I'm injecting this magnet and I'm making the magnetic field here alone. I'm giving magnetic field here alone. So all the spion is going to come there. Think that that uh, spion is being added with some truck. So it is coming there to the part where cancer is there. I am watching that under MRI. I'm watching that under MRI and I'm bringing it there. Now slowly I'm increasing the magnetic power, external magnetic power. So now it is going to generate energy and it is going to kill cancer cell. Cancer cells cannot withstand more than 38 degrees centigrade. Whereas our normal cells can withstand up to 41 degree, but whereas this cannot, cancer cells cannot. So obviously I can treat cancer cells very specifically by means of uh, heat generation. I call that method as hyperthermia. And then uh, they started working with uh, uh, nanotheranostic approach with more. Actually what they did here, they have added uh, this uh, for tumor imaging they did. And the one fellow went one step ahead. What they did, they cultured these uh, stem cells. He wanted to work with stem cells. And uh, he cultured these uh, stem cells in uh, iron oxide and he gave it to animal. Normally what we do, whether the stem cell is there or not, whether the stem cell inserted or not, right? That is the biggest question there. Now, if you are inserting with spion, the stem cell is with spion. If you insert and you can see through MRI, that is one thing. Then known, if you are not having MRI, it is very simple. Take the organ, go for a histological section and do staining. You do Prussian blue staining. Prussian blue staining will localize where spion is. It's because Prussian blue stains iron. So it is, you can see that uh, particular cell, whether it is present or not. So the spion is having much uh, application when it is coming to the nanotheranostic approaches, right? If you are working on it, so that is a good way to work on. Then the nano shells. Uh, these nano shells actually, uh, they are using gold uh, nanoparticles. What they are doing actually, uh, this is a good work, you know, actually they are making uh, macrophages to take this uh, gold nanoparticles. This macrophage goes and specifically interacts with tumor cell. I, I practice this macrophage to go and interact with tumor cell. So this is uh, going to interact with tumor cell. Uh, how it is means it is very simple. Take antigen uh, out of uh, this cancer cell, make that macrophage to interact with. Now they have a bit of memory. So it is going to target that and it is going to work on that. There are a number of uh, things there. I'm not uh, speaking about it. I'm just uh, saying it is my uh, macrophage is going to interact with the cancer cell. Now what do you do? Now we increase the temperature outside. When any temperature or light is hit, when light is hit, this gold is give out more heat energy. This gold absorbs light energy and going to give out more heat energy, kind of hyperthermia reaction. And now this cancer cells are going to be dying and then we can take out of that. And uh, most of the earlier studies that gold and uh, gold and iron are not much toxic to human because uh, there are, uh, we had once uh, all over the world, they used gold for making some uh, uh, drug formulation and they said that it is having anti-aging activity. But if you take more, right, you will not become kid, your kidney will be stopped functioning. So when we, I spoke, when I spoke about uh, this, again, this, uh, yeah, they work with this uh, gold nanoparticle, they add uh, aptamers or some conjugates like that okay and then they target uh, that particular cell so here they did what they did right so they have added uh, antisense rna here antisense rna and sense rna here this they are going to give this gold to the cancer cell this cancer cell is going to take in so what it is taking in this uh, antisense rna once antisense rna is going in what would happen there is going to be rna interference that means the specific gene is going to stop functioning so we can target particular gene also by means of this nanoparticle. So uh, the efficient drug delivery system is possible with magnetic nanoparticle. When you're combining magnetic, then gold, sorry, you are combining this magnetic and metal and as well as your uh, polymer, a hybrid nano system is going to come, which is going to be much effective and uh, it is going to be less toxic or non, no toxic. Then this is uh, nanopores. Uh, say that uh, you are making a band-aid and you are having a strip where uh, this is having nanopores. So here you are having the bandaid where it is having the drug. I'm going to 
have this nano pores and I'm going to paste it. What happens? Slowly the drug re releases, slowly the drug releases. Because most occasion, the drug delivery is faster means excretion is faster. The drug is going to be sent out faster. So that is why we want a slow delivery system. So if you think about that, we can think about uh, this uh, nano pores where very few are working with that. And the nano pores mostly uh, they use is uh, a por uh, porous silicon uh, particles. Even if you are taking silicon particle, immediately that will be sent out of the system. You will have definitely have a question that uh, silicon do cause some uh, problem with lungs and kidney. Is obviously before you are going to give them, you have to check for its uh, hypersensitivity and all. Obviously, it is obvious. Okay. So now uh, I have said about this and uh, how can you make them work? That is a question we do have. Whenever we want to work with the nano formulation, very first, whenever we start, it uh, takes you to failure. But when you are crossing this failure, you would reach success and then you will be unique. Uh, see that uh, one day uh, uh, I was just uh, traveling to uh, a church. That time I saw one tree uh, and the tree was having very big, big uh, uh, kind of uh, fruit bodies there. So I just took that fruit body. I was seeing more fibers there, small, small fibers like that. So I was thinking what this fiber is going to be useful. The next day, uh, God uh, sent a person to me, say we can, uh, uh, his name uh, is uh, uh, Mr. Shiva. So he came to me and he was speaking about, he wants to work with some fiber. So we started working with the fiber. And then, uh, you know, that is the first report. And now it is uh, published in a very good impact uh, journal, um, above of six. So that is really good, you know. So whenever you are seeing something, right, just do something, right? Then later I understood that Richard Feynman said the same. Fall in love with some activity and do it. Nobody ever figures out what life is all about. And it does not matter. Explore the world. Nearly everything is really interesting if you go into deep enough. So you have to think more. Work as hard and as much you want to on the things you like to do the best. Don't think about what you want to be, but what you want to do, be with that. Keep up some kind of minimum with other things so that society does not stop you from do, doing anything at all. So that is what uh, Richard Feynman has said. So whenever you are going to start with anything, please think that you must have some hurdles. Don't go for uh, getting references everywhere. If you are going to follow some references, you never become a reference for someone. So if you really want someone to follow your references, obviously you have to, you should not follow anyone's reference. So try to make like that. So obviously we have challenges when uh, we are coming to the nano formulation. How do you prevent the drug from getting degraded from biological system and we are giving it? Is targeted delivery possible? Again, the question is there. It depends upon uh, patient to patient. Then uh, bloodstream is there. Bloodstream is very small. We have to cross that, right? It is not just, uh, it's not a balloon, is it not? It is having complex systems. Then patient's health. Uh, sometimes uh, some will be showing hypersensitivity. If they are showing hypersensitivity, right, it is a health problem. Then uh, coming to the cost effector, if it is gold uh, nanoparticle, obviously it is going to be costly. Then uh, storage and shelf life, obviously the major problem with nanoparticle is we cannot store it for a longer time. So every time we have to prepare and we have to use. So these are the hurdles we have to. Already I showed, told you, without hurdles, your research will not be proceeding further. So really you must shoot it out. So there are some strategies for uh, drug delivering. Uh, before we go for that, uh, that is, uh, we must have some strategy, which one you are going to work with. Whether you are going to work with double targeting or passive targeting or active targeting or inverse targeting, what you are going to work. Think that what you are uh, polymer or whatever the things you are having, what it is going to favor, think it, then proceed. So this is inverse targeting. This is inverse targeting. Say that actually I'm taking a dabbler. I'm taking a tablet. So when I'm taking that tablet, what is happening? When it is going to uh, liver, it is uh, absolutely done. It is not reaching the reticular endothelial cell, uh, reticular endothelial system. So what I do when I'm taking this uh, one tablet, I also take some other thing, which is making liver not to digest this. Liver not to digest this. Now this is going to be working there. You know why we are uh, taking capsules? Why not the tablet? Because these capsules are helpful for not getting degraded there. And they are making the drug to 
be available in our body. That is why. So the same thing, if it is big, go for a very small one. That is nano. That is a bigger one. You say macro, you make it as nano. So they used, uh, one study they used uh, Poloxamer 388, uh, one polymer, they are calling that. that. And uh, they have uh, found it that we can do inverse targeting using this. Now, whenever it is uh, going there, it is not going to be degraded by that. So either you can do by means of adding two drugs, which is going to down the other one and making the other one to be available. Say it is going to down the liver enzymes and then it is going to, this drug is available and it is going to reach the target. So that is one way of uh, targeting. Then passive targeting. Uh, this is a work uh, done by us. Uh, I, I, I must mention uh, that girl here, uh, Ms. Sveda. Uh, she only did uh, a great work here because she brought the almond gum there. Uh, it was looking like a white color uh, mass. And I was asking her, what, ask, I asked her, what are you going to do? She said that I'm going to do nanoparticle with that. That time I was working with Kaitosan. I, I insisted her to work with that, but I gave freedom to her. Then uh, she asked me some doubts. I just clarified that. Then later she uh, made a nanoparticle out of it. Uh, the wonderful thing is it was interacting very good with uh, cell membrane. And it was uh, making the curcumin to cross. What you are seeing here is actually curcumin is uh, able to fluoresces. So this is uh, not curcumin, only with curcumin treated, where the fluorescence is not specific inside the cell. But whereas this is with uh, nanoparticle and the curcumin is uh, entered, curcumin fluoresces. We have found that it is fluorescing inside that. And we found it is uh, doing that uh, very great. And uh, uh, she characterized everything uh, very well. And uh, that was a uh, good work of her. Uh, and then active targeting. This is what uh, uh, pop uh, popularly people work with. So mostly they take uh, a ligand. Mostly this is going to be a part of antibody, which interacts with antigen, say FAB of uh, antibody, or sometimes we call it as a single chain fragment variable. So we take uh, this. We very simply say ligand binds to cancer cells specifically. This ligand binds to cancer cells specifically. So add your ligand to your nanocarrier where you are going to have drug. So now this uh, one can bind to cancer cell because it is having ligand. So we are having our drug here. So whenever we put it here, it is going to bind to the cancer receptor and going to deliver drug. But uh, when I say that easy, it is not easy because you have to think about the ligand, incorporating them and stability, everything is really matter. And now uh, they have uh, they have started doing with the RDNA technology. They have incorporated that with uh, other protein, which is used for uh, nanocarrier synthesis. They incorporated that FAB, and they are making nanocarriers using that. If it is going to come, then obviously treating cancer is going to be very easy. But uh, again, it is going to be costly because uh, and monoclonal antibody, if it is involving, it is going to be a bit costly. Then double targeting. Uh, here, uh, the double targeting is we are what we do is actually uh, most occasion uh, when, whenever we are going to do, we want to deliver at a particular place where the pH is less or pH is more like that. So we can think about that double targeting. Here, what will happen? One is going to help in binding, another is going to get enter. You know, this is how our plant test track works. Whenever we are taking a plant test track, in Siddha, they give crude preparation. So the crude preparation, whenever you are taking, one molecule helps in binding, and another molecule helps in sending them in. The other molecule is going to have activity. So if you do that with your nanoparticle, if you're going to add everything, and if you're going to do that with your nanoparticle, obviously you call it as double targeting. Then 2L targeting. So say that you want to target two things there inside the cell. You want to target the DNA and else you want to target the RNA or else you want to target protein synthesis. If you are going to do like that, then obviously you can do with that. So it is, uh, again, you have to work more with that. And uh, uh, say whenever you are using two drugs, obviously the problem is side effects. We have to rule it out and uh, that problem will be coming with that. So these are all some uh, other uh, nanomaterials we do use. That is uh, cubosomes, the nanocrystals, the nanobots. So these are all the common uh, other uh, things we use. As I said earlier, spions we use. So as I said that uh, these spions, uh, we can use external magnet and we can bring there here and we can treat it by, by hyperthermia. So whenever you are going to work with uh, that, 
what are the stimuli we can do say that uh, you want to deliver some drug in uh, stomach make uh, that capsule which is sensitive to pH acidic pH so when it is going to stomach then it is going to be then you can target enzymes liver enzymes it should deliver in enzyme liver means put that nano material which is going to go to liver the enzyme is going to digest that your drug is going to be released like that you can target like that we have uh, things like temperature so sometimes whenever uh, you are making them to uh, have that we are going to increase temperature right and i already told you in nano shell we can increase the temperature of uh, gold by means of uh, exposing them to light that is possible like that we can go for it so then as i said that magnetic field we can do then ultrasound we can use of that so whenever you are going to work with nano any nano thing say that you are going to make them to work differently uh, here i want to specify that they started working with some uh, contraceptive one where the concept contraceptive one they wanted to make uh, actually for uh, male there is no better contraceptive so they made a component they injected that in the male that is in the uh, uh, seminal uh, vesicle that place where the semen is coming they just injected there it forms a polymer there it forms a polymer there so this polymer is going to be there so sperm is not going to enter the semen and it is not going to come out of that so it is kind of the thing they did and whereas with uh, contraceptive with male it is not reversible now the plus is the polymer is dissolving only in ethanol but no in our body no other cells are going to produce ethanol so that side no ethanol is going to be produced whenever the male wants to go back for that then they inject ethanol there and they dissolve that and they do that was a kind of a hypothesis given so even whenever you are thinking about any hypothesis just first think then start working on that hypothesis and try to do and come out of that then it is going to be really, really working with that then com coming to this uh, in vivo fate and the bio distribution so when it is uh, as i said already whatever the nano carrier if it is polysaccharide or it is uh, liposome your lipase is going to degrade your lipid based nano particle if it is polysaccharide our system takes it very easily if it is a case if it is iron see, again our cells will readily take but whereas gold and silica nano particles sent out through urine uh, if it is more concentration they do cause uh, nephrotoxicity and uh, most of the other nano particles are going to be taken up by our uh, macrophage and it is going to be cleaned out of the system so the best uh, the, the major advantage of using nano sized drugs are the surface area we can do anything we want and bioavailability is more and uh, reduced concentration of drug is enough here and i can work on the target i can work on the target and i can reduce the side effects uh, but still we have to work more with that and we need ethical clearances and then uh, we have to get uh, approval from uh, fda then only only it will be coming to the market still uh, very few nanoparticles have come for the market but uh, there are more number of uh, nano materials which is there which is going to be highly useful for us hopefully it will be coming soon so the limitation is it is obviously uh, expensive then other one chances of failure there after we are giving there sometimes this pion won't work inside the system uh, because of uh, the person is having getting fever or something or some other reaction happens chance of failure is there so we have to rule it out very initially i told you there are hurdles we have to cross so there are there are the hurdles we would be facing then discontinuation of therapy in between is not going to be possible if it is nano then uh, i would like to conclude that polymeric systems have great potential in drug delivery application and uh, most of the thing is not still uh, pending for uh, fda approval so we have to go for more toxicity investigations and hopefully it will come uh, soon and reach uh, human population so if you have any questions here then uh, we can have so richard feynman uh, do say i would rather have questions that can can't be answered than answer that can be questioned so if you have any questions you can ask thank you dr anthony for the very informative uh, presentations so guys now if you have any questions please do just just comment down below if you have any questions you wanted to ask dr anthony can answer
which is related to the presentation that you present just now. So, Doctor, I think we have one question here asking about okay, this Kripu Papu. What is the nano pores range to make it work efficient when you have the drug? Nano pore range is going to be say uh, 10 nanometer will work and make sure that the drug is very smaller and it is not aggregating inside. So we have to work on that and uh, the solvent what is going to be used everything is matter here. And sometimes what we do the biological fluids they do interact with the drug and they bring it out. Biological fluids can cross nanopores. You know these nanopores are being used for uh, DNA sequencing too. So enzymes can cross that actually. Okay, hope that answer the Kripu Papu's questions. And the next one will be Avinash Ready Ready. Which monomer of PHA is good for nano applications? Why any recent studies on this? Um, mostly they use uh, polyhydroxybutyrate because it is uh, commonly found. But I do prefer polyhydroxy uh, exonate or hydroxide, which is not uh, most used. And you know, uh, this uh, PHP is uh, used as a suture material. And uh, after suturing, our system is going to degrade and uh, no need of removing the uh, suture. So that is what. So what uh, most use is PHP. Now they are using copolymers. They are using copolymers. They are combining that with uh, PHP combined with PEG, polyethylene glycol, and they are making it. So obviously, I think uh, PHP. I will go with PHP. OK. Thank you. And the next one is Simin Anifa. How nano shell are used in drug delivery system? Uh, as I said earlier, you can functionalize this nano shell. You can functionalize this nano shell using something. Add your drug. So now this nano shell is going to act as two things. It is going to deliver drug. When you are giving light, it is going to increase uh, the temperature and it is going to kill the cancer cells also. Say that drug delivery system means not only delivering cis one, it is also going to act as a drug. Some metals, they do have impact on enzyme inhibition and all. So obviously they can act as a drug itself. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Hope that answered the questions. And um, we're going to be the last, take the last one. Hmm. Okay, another one from Kripu Bapu. If we increase the temperature of gold, and what if the enzymes are not thermostable? Uh, Mr. Kripu, actually, whenever you are going to increase the temperature, don't go beyond 38 because 38 is uh, enough to kill cancer. If you go beyond that, it is going to kill not only the cell, it is also going to destroy the entire tissue. That is why still it is under uh, research because we cannot control that because when you are increasing the temperature immediately we have to decrease you cannot go and dip that patient into water so that is a problem there obviously so it is still under that but uh, whenever you are going to do increase the temperature up to 38 if you go beyond obviously as you said it is going to inhibit enzymes and it is going to ha have some problem so make sure you are uh, reducing the light and reducing the concentration of nanoparticle and you have to watch through. If you do not watch through, obviously it is going to be a problem. That is why I said expensive too. Okay, I guess uh, that is the end of this webinar. Thank you everyone for, the, for joining us. And then please don't forget to share. After the end of this live also, you can share to your friends and get the updates from Masa University page for the upcoming webinars from us. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Can I close?